Hey guys, welcome to Dog Forge. My name's Paul, and welcome back to our overview of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Do you want more Tasha's and D&D content? Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to get the latest on 5e. But now it's time to find out what all the buzzes is about, as today we're taking a look at the Swarmkeeper subclass for the Ranger. Now, the Ranger has really had a huge upsweep for the most part. We'll go with a favoured enemy when my stress levels are down, okay? But for the most part, the Ranger has had a wonderful upsweep in... I wanted to say Xanathar's, because they're always of everything. Of Tasha's Cauldron. And this is one of the more flavorful and fun Ranger subclasses I've seen in a long time. So, the Swarm Keeper is, as it says, your whole thing is basically these... They say nature spirits, so you don't have to realize that all of these little tiny animals are dying all the time so instead they're spirits which is a lot more pleasant but you have a swarm of whatever type of nature creature you'd like insects birds one of the options they give is mini twig blights and you use this swarm to achieve things in combat and they actually give you a very wide and diverse array of abilities but one of the nice things that we get at the beginning isn't even mechanical, and it's this text box right here, it's your swarm. Where they encourage you to personalize your swarm to whatever you find interesting and to describe your spells that way. Now these little sidebars are, you know, they're not strictly necessary, but they go a long way for new players or players that may have always been strictly, you know, this is how it's written, this is what I do. I must make that hand formation every time I do burning hands. This is really great for players to branch out into a more descriptive description of their own character and break it, make it their own. But enough of that, let's get into it. Here we have our piece of art for the Swarm Keeper, a gnome that utilizes a mix of insects, some of which are butterflies. So we can see that the swarm is actually coming out of the pouch on her back and they even cover the tip of the arrow, great evocative imagery, really big fan of that. So level 3 you're going to get Gathered Swarm. A swarm of intangible nature spirits has bonded itself to you and can assist you in battle. Until you die, the swarm remains in your space, crawling on you or flying and skittering around you within your space. You determine its appearance or you generate its appearance by rolling on the swarm appearance table which gives you the options of swarming insects, miniature take twig blights, fluttering birds, and playful pixies. Now, if you really don't like the idea of things crawling on you, then you may want to go for the flying option and have it in a bag or something like the artwork. Although, who would have thought that Shinji Aburame would have been a ranger, really? Now, you can use the swarm in a few different ways at the third level. So, once on each of your turns, you can cause the swarm to assist you in one of the following ways immediately after you hit with an attack. So no matter what you pick, you get to do the following once, even if you mix and match. Only once per turn. You can add a d6 of piercing damage from the swarm. The attack's target must succeed on a strength saving throw against your spell save DC, or be moved by the swarm up to 15 feet horizontally in the direction of your choice. Now this has potential to really lock down and manipulate the battlefield, especially if spike growth is in play, or if you're trying to just keep an opponent really um, really locked down in an area. Now this doesn't say it pushes the creature, it says that you move it in any direction. So if a, you know, if a creature is trying to escape, and you're using something like a longbow that has a particularly large range, not only can you whittle away its health at range, but you can also yank it back 15 feet each turn as your you know, relentless barbarian is powering after it. And so, so far, pretty great. Finally, you can choose to move yourself 5 feet horizontally after your attack. Now, as the swarm is what is moving you, you will not provoke attacks of opportunity. So this is really great if you want to do a hit and run skirmishing kind of build. Something to bear in mind with this is if you're doing this then you're going to have to risk, this is particularly for 5th level or if you're 2 weapon fighting, you're going to have to risk holding on until your last attack. 
If you hit the first time, then obviously the movement is not going to benefit you because you'll be out of range. So there's more of a risk involved there, but it's nice to have that option. Now at third level, we are also going to get some enhanced magic from our swarm. So first off, you learn the mage hand cantrip if you don't already know it. And when you cast it, it takes it on the form of swarming nature spirits. And then you also learn an additional spell first level or higher when you reach certain levels in this class. And as always with ranger subclasses that get additional spells, you will always know these, but they won't count against your spells known. So, third level, besides Mage Hand, we're also going to get Fairy Fire. Fifth level, we're going to get Web, very thematic. Ninth level, we're going to get Gaseous Form, and we had a bit of a descriptor in the It's Your Swarm box about melting into the swarm, which is very cool. Thirteenth level, Arcane Eye, and seventeenth level, very appropriately, Insect Plague. Not a bad spell list. Web and Gaseous Form in particular are very nice, and I like the idea of the Mage Hand being a swarm. Just a quick side note, I'm going to play this at some point. I will be a beekeeper. I love the idea of these tiny, fat little bees just working really hard in combat. And besides, a beekeeping outfit looks like armor that would actually be comfortable to wear. Just a side thought. At 7th level, we're going to get the Writhing Tide. You can condense part of your swarm into a focused mass that lifts you up. As a bonus action, you gain a flying speed of 10 feet and can hover. The effect lasts for one minute or until you're incapacitated, and you can do this a number of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. This is really great. This is a slow speed, only 10 feet. Something to bear in mind is if you have mixed movement speeds, so if you have a 30 foot land speed and a 10 foot fly speed, you can move 20 feet on the ground and then use your 10 foot fly speed. And the importance of the hover tag, which we don't normally get in flying abilities, but has been more common in Tasha's, is that if your speed is reduced to zero for some reason, then you are not actually going to fall out of the sky. Like could happen to an Arakokra, for instance. Or I think if somebody uses the fly spell as well, I don't think that gives you a hover. So overall, this is a pretty great ability, and this adds more... Both in combat utility of being able to take higher ground, even if a little bit slowly, but it also means that you can overcome obstacles out of combat without having to use a spell as well. And any time a marshal gets more utility that isn't just tacking on a spell, I am a huge fan of that. Moving on to 11th level, and we have Mighty Swarm. Your Gathered Swarm grows mightier in the following ways. This is basically just amping up everything you've got at 3rd level. So the damage of Gathered Swarm increases to 1d8. Personally, I think that damage boost is necessary, but could be more significant. So every time you go up a die size, you're going to get an additional average of 1 point of damage more. I think they could have afforded to go to 1d10. I think it breaks a little bit of precedence that they've established in other subclasses. But at the same time, going from a d6 to a d8 is barely moving the needle most of the time, especially when you're doing this damage once per turn. Uh, more impressively though, if a creature fails its saving throw against being moved by the swarm, you can also use it to knock them prone. Not great if you're an archer, but great for all of your, me your melee combatants, and great for yourself if you're also in melee. And finally, when you are moved by the swarm, you gain half cover until the start of your next turn which is really sweet and really helps out as well because if you're two weapon fighting or using a bow or a crossbow or something like a ranger is wont to do then you're not going to be able to use a shield and rangers don't get heavy armor so this is a nice way to just increase your defensives especially as you're getting up there finally at 15th level we're going to get swarming dispersal you can discorporate into your swarm avoiding danger when you take damage, you can use a reaction to give yourself resistance to that damage. You vanish into your swarm and teleport to an occupied space you can see within 30 feet of you, where you appear with the swarm. Now, you can use this a number of times per long rest, equal to your proficiency bonus. So, you're up there at 15th level, was that five times? 
that's a really significant defensive boost for the ranger. It's kind of like a gnome's fadeaway racial feat, had a baby with Misty Step, and then you just got to do it a whole bunch. It's a really nice ability. And overall, at every step of the way, this ranger gets something meaningful. It gets something entirely thematic to what it is all about. And I don't think there's any real wasted space in this subclass. Even that minor damage bump later on, all of the other abilities that you got like increased in a more meaningful way. So, overall, I'm really happy with the subclass. I'm looking forward to playing my little beekeeper, and I hope that you guys are looking forward to it as well. But what do you think about the Swarm Keeper? Let us know in the comments section down below and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Whilst you're there, hit the subscribe and notification bell for more D&D and Tasha's content. But if you're in the mood for that right now, look on screen, you should be seeing some boxes. My name's Paul, and I will see you next time at the Forge.